I'm now going to use hand-dyed fabric for this demonstration, which does not have a right and a wrong side, which is as clearly defined as with commercial fabric. So you have to take a decision on which is your right side and stick to that right side, because like in any aspects of this technique, you always cut with the fabric both right sides up. So here's our first piece, which is I'm going to cut a square out of it with a curvy seam curvy line. It's not a perfect square, it never can be, but it approximates it. And now I'm going to put some strips around it. I'm going to use the technique I showed before. I'm going to follow this curve I'm going to cut my strip a little longer than the square and I'm going to cut the other half roughly straight. I will shape it afterwards. And I'm going to stitch this. Just as before, you stop when you need to and reposition the fabric. And now I'm going to iron it before I put the next strip on. Now I'm going to put another strip, just like I did before. And I'm going to trim any bits that are a bit un untidy, but I'm still going to keep that strip a bit longer than the square. And the reason for that is that I don't want that, that strip to become shorter after the stitching. Now I've prepared two more strips to put on the other two sides. Uh, first of all, I've got to shape this following that curve. And then I'm going to cut the other two strips. Again, I line up the bottom, make sure that the other end is longer than the piece I'm using. one now I'm going to stitch them together and iron them again now I'm going to trim that piece and then I'm sure I'll show you what you can do with it next. We can now make a whole lot of different uh, lock cubbings with a different color center and a different range of strips around it and um, you can play with them put them together and make a whole quilt from that or you can put more strips around it make a much larger lock cubbing and then construct a quilt from that. If you want to put more strips, you can play around with your colors and you can also put different colors in different areas. Lock cubbing is a very versatile type of block coming from the traditional uh, side of quilting and you can keep building and keep trimming every square with a curve and building with another sh uh, color, another strip, and get to a very nice effect. I've used the lock cabin here. Uh, you can see most of them have just one center and one color around it. In some cases, I built it so it's two centers to them, or even a whole collection. But it's always the same principle, a square and strips around it. And of course, color is very important. And when I build a quilt, I always get my color sorted out first, and then I start 
building the separate blocks. In this case, I've used some thin curved strips to join them together and that is simply um, made using exactly the same technique I showed you earlier of how to make curved seams. In terms of the stitching, the quilting, I've just been working with um, square spirals, start in the middle and go all the way round, the same you can do with the others. This set of three quilts are a triptych uh, inspired by Shakespeare's Sonnet 18, so I've incorporated some writing, some quotations from the sonnet into the quilt, which are done with uh, screen printing. It actually says, Thy eternal summer shall not fade. This quilt is um, made in a similar way to the checkerboard pattern I showed you before. Um, they're all strips which are joined together, except that they are of different colours. And all you do, you stitch them together, then you cut them in sections, just like you did with the checkerboard, and then you can join them in a much more random way that you did with the checkerboard, because you're not aiming you're not aiming at a perfect pattern, you are aiming at a nice colourful effect. You can see the corners never match, but you do have this nice feeling of spring and a garden, which is what this quilt illustrates, is the darling buds of May, which is another quotation from Shakespeare's sonnet. Uh, the third quilt in this triptych illustrates the later part of the sonnet and is called In Eternal Lines to Time. And that's what I did. I put loads and loads of different lines some very thin, some a little thicker, uh, and it has a screen printing repeated three times. And the basic principle is exactly the same as I demonstrated before, it's just the curvy line. So I hope you're going to give it a good try, have some fun cutting curves, not being too shy about it. Fabric stretches, naturally, you have to go with the flow and I hope you achieve some nice pieces and enjoy yourself doing it.